Hey folks, Kilban here again. Yeah, another outside broadcast. Yeah, it's liquid lunch time as well. Yeah, so join me, liquid lunch. The best tipple in town. Whiskey. It's gotta be whiskey, hasn't it? No. Always. So anyway, well, there's a bit of shit. It's not super mild, like it's ridiculously mild for this time of year. But it's great to walk around, strut about, and it kills the nevest, of course. And the kilt I'm wearing today, some of you might know it actually. Let's see if I can show you here. This one is the Weathered Fraser. Now this one, if any of you watch the, uh, the TV show Outlander, that is, that is the kilt from Outlander, that one. I didn't buy it because it's an Outlander. I don't even watch Outlander, but I bought it because I thought, that's a nice tartan, that. that looks really good. So I was quite intrigued by it, especially the fact it's weathered. As you've seen with all the other kilts, and I've got 47, 48 different kilts now, um, clans have different tartans. They have like, they'll have the royal, they'll have an ancient, they'll have a modern, a muted, a hunting variant. Uh, the Stuart range has got, there's a Stuart black, which is, you've seen that, I've worn that a few times, it's fantastic, love that. But this is weathered, which gives it that sort of rustic, aura of antiquity it's kind of earthy the colors kind of muted and uh, and i love it but this is also the worst kilt i've ever encountered because when it arrived i have no mind that most of my kilts are, are hand woven out of pure wool but this one whatever that material is it's like like a tarpaulin you know it creases and the, the creases stay in, they can't be ironed out. The pleats are all wrong, like the pleats have been put in, but then they've been put in double. So you've got double creases on each pleat, making the pleats fucking almost unbearably awkward. <laughs> they don't swish like they're meant to swish. They don't hang right either. The idea with the kilt is basically once you've gone it, you can wash it, wash the bloody thing and it will hang perfectly straight. It will hang down. It will just keep its shape and its character. You haven't got to iron these bastards. You shouldn't have to do that. This thing, I know Mrs. poor Mrs. Kiltman has endeavored to try to um, iron this bastard. And no, no, no can do. It fights back. It actually wrestles with the iron. Son of a bitch. And like, I've used mm, probably about six or seven different companies up in Scotland for all my kilts. This was a new one, uh, a new company to me, and I'm not going to name them because I, they did three, they, they produced a range of three weathered um, tartans. But the other two tartans, I didn't, I wasn't interested in. I've got pretty much all the variants of, of those particular clan tartans anyway. But the Fraser, I didn't have any Fraser at all, and I thought, yeah, that looks nice, that. And then when I got it, I discovered, oh God, that's in that show Outlander. And I thought everyone's gonna go, oh, you're wearing that just to be like, what is it, Jamie? Jamie and Outlander. And uh, that ain't the case, folks. Kill the man doesn't follow any sort of flock, you know? He's his own, his own clansman, you know? But as I say, I do like it. I'll try and show you it again. You've got a bit of an idea of this, of the colors in it. Talking brown, shot through with red, pale blue, white, check. It is lovely, it is lovely. And it has a sort of a very historical, uh, ancient sort of quality to it. You say ancient, Kilt only went back to Scotland in the 16th century. Although Tartan, which was discovered, I'll do, I'll do a proper video on this one day. Tartan was discovered way deep into Asia, almost China with mummified um, corpses going back centuries and centuries and Egyptian cotton had been used and woven into what became like a, a Chinese sort of pattern plaid but tartan because there's a difference but they were doing a tartan way back thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago and uh, and because they're using this fantastic uh, cotton material from Egypt or wherever, like it stays, it's kept, it, it's kept its shape, it's kept its vibrancy of colour, and it's actually a tartan pattern. So, 
the Scots did not invent the tartan, although Celts have been using tartan since time immemorial, because that's been proved as well. So there's a lot of a lot of stuff goes into all this. But Celts didn't even come from Scotland in the first place. They're fucking Scandinavian for Christ's sake. <laughs> so anyone that goes around, oh the Celt aye, it's pure Scottish that. No, no it's not. It's fucking Scandinavian. And if you dig deep you're gonna find the tartan fucking come from bloody deepest Asia. <laughs> and of course, you know, the Black Watch was actually an English police force that was set up there to police the Highland rogues, you know. And of course, once the, uh, the Highland rogues saw the uniform that these coppers were wearing, these English policemen, they were wearing a kilt, dark green and black. At night, it looks totally black, hence the Black Watch it became a regiment. But of course, in their infinite wisdom, these Highland rogues and chieftains thought, hang on, if you're gonna wear a uniform, then we're gonna wear a fucking uniform as well. And uh, so each clan would develop its own system of tartans, which played right into the English police hands because, okay, who rustled those sheep? Who took those oxen? Who took those cows? Well, they were wearing, it was, it, was a, it was a black tartan with red going across it and a yellow, a yellow um, sort of line down to the eastwards. Ah, oh, that'll be the Mackenzie's then. Fucking got them every time. And that's what happens. That's what happens. So, but I love them. You folks all know that. So, anyway, I just thought I'd share a whiskey with you this dinner time. And uh, another video later on, proper one this time. Some more reviewing, yeah? And uh, some trailers have dropped. Spider-Man, Far From Home. Oh yes, I'll give a verdict on that. And of course, the Game of Thrones teaser dropped yesterday as well. And it literally was just a teaser. It really wasn't, you know, any sort of showboat and stuff. But, you know, we've got, the, what, what is it, three, four, five movie length versions to, to round out the end of Game of Thrones this year. Wow. And of course, with HBO behind it, that's cinematic quality as well. So these things, I mean, if there is talk of them being shown cinematically as well, and why not do that? Why not do that? Because they are like mini films anyway. Production values are absolutely huge. The acting, the effects, the epic quality of it, it's pure cinema anyway. But I'm digressing. I will talk more about Game of Thrones. I will talk more about Spider-Man. And uh, I'll have a review for you later on. And, oh, in the meantime, in the meantime, I just want to say a quick hello. To Shannon Freak out there in on Ontario. No? Ontario? Ottawa? Oh, hon, I've forgotten where you are. <laughs> it's Ottawa, isn't it? Ottawa, that's where you are. And, uh, you know, hey, keep it cool, keep it Celtic. You're a proper heathen girl. Yeah, a proper Viking shield maiden she is. They're all over the world, you know. Vikings are taking over the world again as well they should so in the meantime folks keep it real keep it celtic keep it celtic but when you get a kilt fucking make sure you can iron the bastard and it doesn't fucking these pleats sort of go out on a tangent so it looks like i'm wearing a fucking pyramid strapped to my ass you know this great big tartan triangle i don't know what's going on there I've gotta work on this anyway guys Keep it real, have fun, drink whiskey whenever and wherever you can. And I'm going to see you all <laughs> later. Yeah. Drop.